Okay. Hi, this is Nicole Johnson-Zian, the news editor for All Israel News and All Arab News. And um, today I'm talking to Andre Levine, who is uh, from, lives now in, in the Galilee. And, um, but Andre uh, is a professional musician and worshiper and involved in a lot of uh, uh, worship movements in the North, in the Galilee and well, all around Israel, known around Israel and also involved with Galil TV. And we'll uh, also talk about that uh, a little bit later. But um, when I first uh, reached out to Andre, when, um, uh, when, the, when the invasion of Ukraine uh, began last week and I reached out to Andre, I found out that you're from Ukraine and not just from Ukraine, but you're from Mariupol. And then I had to, that, that that's, ground zero for what happened. I mean, it seems like that's the first city uh, that that the Russians entered. And I also found out you still have family there. So uh, can you tell us about the situation? What's going on um, over there? And how is your family? <clears throat> so right now, situation is like this. We didn't heard from them for two days already. Uh, the only short message I received from uh, one of my uh, relate, relate, how you say it? Relatives. Relatives. <clears throat> he sent he, he sent me a few words. He, he, he says uh, we are under non-stop bombing and rocket attack. Uh, there is no power. There is no electricity, and internet is very bad. But Right now, all of us are safe, and that's it. Wow! And your your mother in law is there, and you you were telling me she's alone, and um, you haven't heard. Yeah, from uh, we 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 haven't heard from her, but uh, actually, right now she she's not uh, really alone. Her daughter, my wife's uh, old sister, came to her. To be together, they they all of the, all of them together, and also uh, the granddaughter uh, together uh, right now. But uh, this is what we heard from them like four days uh, ago. Uh, they sitting all the time at home, and only once uh, some one of them. Uh, goes to supermarket to bring some food and then quickly goes back uh, home because it's not safe on the streets and uh, from two or maybe three direction there is non-stop rockets uh, attack to Mariupol from the um, south direction of Berdansk the city which is uh, actually right now under Russian control from Donetsk direction, which is a, a separate republic of Russia, which is, exists since 2014, <clears throat> and actually all these eight year they 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 receive rockets from there almost every day, not not in the town but very near to the town. We visited them a few years ago, and we <clears throat> we heard it. We heard cannonade uh, like every day at evening when we're sitting on. In cafe, in coffee shop, we drinking coffee and we heard the cannonade uh, uh, in distance. But for them, it, it already become to be a routine. But right now, something what's going on in Mariupol is not routine anymore because the uh, all infrastructure uh, are destroyed. Uh, Russian army uh, just um, exploding. Uh, power station, a water station, uh, they have no heating in their houses, they have no, no power and no water. This is the situation right now. It's, it's become to be really the humanit humanitarian uh, catastrophe. Wow. And, uh, and I, can, I can call it genocide. Do you have any idea of how many uh, people have been killed in Mariupol? Mm, to tell the truth, no, I know uh, 
I know there is a, a, a korbanot, it's victims. Victims, yeah. Mm -hmm. Victims uh, in, in Mariupol, I don't know how many of them. Uh, I think we're talking about hundreds of people. Wow. Uh, the city itself, the city itself, it's have uh, like more than 400 uh, uh, citizens. And uh, many of them are uh, in the very beginning of, of this world, they, they left, they left the, the city, but uh, most of them stay, stay, uh, stay in the city because, because right now it's not possible to, to leave. And uh, a Ukrainian uh, humanitarian organization of municipality, they turn to Red Cross to talk uh, and to ask a Russian army to stop this uh, siege blockade, Mahsom. Yes, blockade, yes. How, blockade, mm -hmm. to stop it, to stop, uh, um, shoot uh, rockets to the city and to open humanitarian green corridor to bring food and to bring the uh, water and uh, basic uh, needs for the people in the city uh, but uh, as i know right now russian army they they uh, not agree with this oh wow i thought that was part of the peace uh, or the, the negotiation yesterday but we'll see but what i understand um even looking at the map mariupol is a very strategic city because it connects yes. uh from the uh, Crimea to uh, Donetsk, right? Or from the, Don the Donbass region? Yes, not only. It's a city with uh, four or five huge factories uh, producing steel. And uh, uh, they have their own seaport to the Azov Sea, which is like the small part of the Black Sea. Actually, they have the the seaport with possibility to to go out of uh, the country and it's really uh, was important uh, industry center uh, in the past but uh, i talking about factories with like 60 70 hundreds 70 thousands workers on each one it's, it's something huge. It's really, it's something huge. It's factories with their own um, um, transportation inside. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, right now, I think all these are, are destroyed. And uh, I don't know how much time it takes to to rebuild it again, if, I mean, if it's gonna happen uh, at all. That's devastating. What, um, and what about the people who were there? Why didn't they leave before? I know a lot of people chose to stay, it seems in all over Ukraine, not just in Mariupol, but um, like your family, for instance, um, knowing that there's Russian troops now right there, in, in the region's uh, neighboring region, why not leave? You know, uh, uh, what I understand from them, uh, somehow uh, some of them was hoping that uh, even if Russian army will come closer or will take this, this place, this city, they will not, using these methods of uh, actually destroying everything and uh, some somehow they they i think they have this hope that somehow we we can talk or we can have uh, find the solution uh, with negotiations and uh, you know it's like it's hard to believe all, all your life, you know, uh, can be changed one day and you, you need to actually to left everything you know to take with you like emergency case and just run away. 
Um, right now, I think maybe all of them wants to, to leave the, the city, but it's not possible because Russian army exploding the bridges, uh, exploding the rail uh, trains, uh, yep. rail uh, how you say? Uh -huh. Yes, and and just just roads uh, and uh, uh, right now they they really blockaded. There is no way out for for citizens of Mariupol. Uh, I don't know how it ends. I really don't know. It looks very bad, very bad. If you know stories of uh, Second World War in Russia, there was Leningrad. There was a famous. Uh, right now, it's called Saint Petersburg. Mm -hmm. And th this is the place was blockaded by Nazis for 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 many many months, and people was dying there because uh, of uh, starving, mm -hmm. starvation, and starvation. Yes, and uh, right now um, I really hope this is not something will happen in in Mariupol, but Russian army they act acting exactly as a uh, German army acts in the uh, Second World War in, uh, in USSR. This is it's definitely something to pray about and we'll put this you know, in our prayer points for sure to pray for the city and for the people. Um, surely you would think in this day and age with people they know they get the information outside so that there would be an international response. But um, um, so, I also when when I first spoke to you, um, you were talking about the 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 church there, and also there's a minute. There seems to be strong ministries in Mariupol or in that region. Um, a lot of uh, Christians and believers. Um, so, what's happening now with the church there and with the believers there? Okay, the the, the church I know in Mariupol. Uh... Pastor Gennady Mohnenko, you can find about him in, in YouTube. He, he uh, pastor I know personally, and I visit them years ago, and we help them and we support them with uh, children ministry because he have really heart for the children on the streets. He, by himself, he adopt more than 30 children. He's a father of more than 30 children. And, he always was involved in uh, humanitarian, really special ministries and projects. And right now, he his church, uh, of course, they opened the they building for all kinds of refugees. It's it's all the cinema building they used, and um, just. Uh, 20 minutes ago, I received some message, my wife in touch with them. I don't know how, how they can be in touch, but it's some uh, telegram uh, messages she, she, she received. They, they give in the list of, uh, of things uh, uh, that they can buy for, for the, for the, uh, citizens of Mariupol, they they serving, and and few days ago we sent money to them. Uh, we we can uh, we can use the uh, MoneyGram or Western Union. I don't know uh, today if we can do it again. We we hope we can. And uh, not only in Mariupol, we know few uh, pastors and ministries in other places like Odessa, like Lvov. Lviv in, in Ukrainian, it's near to uh, Poland uh, border, mm -hmm. and they they also uh, opened the uh, churches building for the refugees, and they uh, pastor of uh, church in Lviv, he used his own minivan to evacuate people from dangerous places to less dangerous places, and. 24 seven, they busy only with humanitarian uh, help to Ukrainian people. So we trying to do as much as we can to support them, to send money to them. Uh, it's still possible. I hope it will possible in the future. 
And uh, this is what in our heart, this is our natural response for these uh, things we heard from them. We, we see the videos, we see the pictures, we're talking with them uh, in, in video uh, calls. Mm -hmm. So we know that they really right now in this desperate situation. Yes, desperate situation. And yeah, yeah. yeah. You told me uh, earlier that you, um, on Galil TV, you did a live um, broadcast and you had people calling in from shelters in uh, yes. Ukraine. Uh, what are they saying and what's, what's the situation for them? Hi, you know what? It's, I hardly can say it, it, it's funny, but it's interesting that actually, yeah, we, we talk with those people in sitting in basements with uh, a lot of kids and telling us about their the situation and the humanitarian projects they're doing. And they actually was in, in with, with uh, spirit, uh, you know, like uh, they actually trying to um, to uh, have mercy? No, no. To, to comfort. They to trying comfort. to comfort Thank us. Yes. They trying to comfort us because we we sitting in the in the studio. We talking in them live in in video calls. We was like just almost crying. Don't know what to say. Don't know what to how to respond. And they they really trying to comfort us and to uh, like. They have this, you know, spirit of unity. They really, uh, I don't know how to explain. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> of course, th there is a, there is a, there is a shock, and there is a really hard uh, feelings. And and some sister was really crying in in her life uh we made in galil tv and she said it must stop and and please pray that that all this will stop and uh in all this situation they really um doing everything to give themselves to others they're not trying you know to make themselves like the corp the victims and to to say look at us how 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 pure we are and and but they they actually you know just encouraging us and also we 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 try to encourage them because we told them we know what how this to sit in the in the shelter but right now their situation much much worse than everything we we experience here in israel Definitely, definitely. I don't think um, in my time here we've experienced anything. How um, you were born in Mariupol, <clears throat> and we, when did you make Aliyah? Oh yeah, I was born in Mariupol, seventy one, nineteen seventy one. So in last year I was fifteen. I I made Aliyah in nineteen ninety four. Uh, I finished my study in musical college. In Mariupol in 1994, then I made Aliyah. Mm -hmm. and I received the Lord in 1995 here in Tiberias in Morning Star Fellowship. Was uh, baptized in Jordan River 1995, and and uh, since there I serving in in the Morning Star Fellowship in worship. Oh, and have you been back to your hometown uh, since you moved to Israel? We visit, of course, we visit my family, my parents, but they already, uh, they already died. Uh, and I, actually, I have a knee, my niece and her and she, husband and daughters and my mother-in-law and some other uh, uh, relatives there and many friends and, and brother, sister and faith. We visit them, we always feel like 
it's part of our life and it was really nice nice place it's place on the board of the sea with very nice beaches and uh, nature and uh, like holiday village and uh, uh, also it was industrial zone you know it's a lot of people works and uh, they have simple life they have a kind of uh, uh, you know their own understanding of uh, political situation between Russia and Ukraine. <clears throat> Most of them, of course, they they was uh, uh, pro Ukrainian. Uh, but right now, people in Mariupol, they uh, I think they really confused I, they don't know exactly what they can do and uh, from where they can receive the help but we are as believers we know that help comes from the lord we of course we can pray for them mm -hmm. and intercess for them and this is what we are doing all the time but i really feel i really believe uh, we can do more than just to pray for them. What can we do? As I told you before, for the last few days, we are sending money to the ministries in Ukraine in different cities. Uh, on Galil TV, if we're talking about Galil TV, our channel, we, right. we have some uh, PayPal and Patreon buttons people can use okay. on this channel. and they can write the uh, message offerings for Ukraine or something. And we are sending everything right now there. Okay, I'll for include a link. Few cities. Huh? I'll include a link to, to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And also here in Israel, people can turn to me uh, uh, personally. Mm -hmm. Who knows my 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 phone number? People can use Bit, and people already uh, for the last few days people already sending me money in a Bit, and I transferred them to Ukraine, and I can actually to make um, uh, screenshots of uh, reception from MoneyGram when we sending uh, the money to Ukraine amounts and names and. Uh, uh, we sending to the ministries to the people we know personally. We know they doing uh, really holy, you know, work for for everybody, not just to believers, but just to everybody. Because right now there is no difference if you are Christian or Messianic or a non-believer. Your life is in danger. Right. Right. Wow. Okay. Well, this is very good. This is very specific ways to help and, um, and to pray. And um, uh, thank you for sharing. I mean, I was, for you, it's a very personal as well. And I can't imagine, you know, if, you, if you'll be able to go back there in a few years or a few months even and see what the situation is there. So thank you so much. I think, um, you know, thank you for sharing. Thank you for your time. And, you know, we're just come uh, beside your family, like in support with prayer for, to keep them safe and, and to keep them protected and brave during this time. And, um, and also thank you for the practical ways to help. And we'll share that too. So thank you, Andre.